Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session guys, I'm going to be doing three questions on projectile motion. Right, so this is known to be a tricky topic and it's really hard to just do one video which explains every possible scenario. So I thought I'd just go through three examples and explaining my thinking process to do projectile motion. So here is the first one. Uh, question one. A dart player throws a dart horizontally. By the time it reaches the dart board, 3 metres away, it has fallen the height of 0 0.20 metres. Taking g is equal to 9.8 metres per second squared, find the time of flight. Find the time of flight. How would you find the time of flight here? Right, so first of all, for me, my thinking process is that I'm going to look at uh, SUVAT in both the horizontal and the vertical planes. So we're going to put this down over here. So... I'm just going to write down SUVAT over here, S, U, V, A, and T. And I'm just going to just do a line over here. Uh, so obviously one is going to be in the horizontal plane and one's going to be in the vertical plane over here. So in the horizontal over here, and the next one's going to be vertical. I always find it helps me when I'm tackling questions. So in the horizontal plane, the distance that it travels, the displacement over here is going to be three. Okay, in the vertical plane, it's obviously traveled 0.2. So it's 0.2, so they're not the same here. The initial velocity in the horizontal plane, we don't know it. So we're not sure about it. The initial velocity in the vertical plane, well, I know it because the dart is thrown horizontally. So therefore, its velocity at the start, none of it is going to be in the vertical plane. So the velocity in the vertical plane will be zero. The velocity in the vertical plane will be zero because I'm just throwing it horizontally. So therefore, in the vertical plane, it will be zero. Okay, the final velocity, what will the final velocity be? I won't know it. Well, in the vertical plane, yes, because obviously it will fall and obviously it will gain velocity. But in the horizontal plane, we know that there will be no acceleration. So therefore, these two values will be the same. The acceleration now, the acceleration in the horizontal plane, because I'm throwing it, there's no acceleration, so it's going to be zero over here. The vertical plane now, in the vertical plane, we know as you as it falls down the vertical plane, it will be equal to 9.8. Yes, whatever they've given me over here, because it will accelerate downwards. So um, the initial velocity in the horizontal plane, we don't know. The final velocity in the horizontal plane, we don't know over here. The time of the flight now, the time of the flight. Well, look, I can use SUVAT in the vertical plane to work out the time of the flight. I can't do it for the horizontal because I only, I only know two things over here. So I can't really use this. So in the vertical plane, I can use the SUVAT in the vertical plane to solve this problem. So the time of flight over here. So we know we've got S, we've got A, and we've got U over here. What can we do then? Okay, so the time of flight over here. First of all, okay, let's write down all my SUVAT equations. V is equal to U plus AT. V squared is equal to U squared plus the 2AS. S is equal to a UT plus the half AT squared. And S is equal to U plus V divided by 2 times by T over here. Uh, yes, so uh, yeah, U plus V divided by 2 times by T. I've done proofs of these formulas. You can watch them on my channel. Just click on the links in my description below. Right, so the time of flight, okay, so I've got S, I've got U, I've got A, and I want to find T. That's going to give me this one over here. So we can put this down. S is equal to a UT plus a half AT squared. Yes, this is in the vertical plane. We're looking at it in the vertical plane. So um, S is 0 0.2. The initial velocity is 0. The time, we don't know. So 0 times by T plus the half uh, acceleration vertical plane is 9.8 positive, yes, because it will gain velocity and times by t squared. Right, therefore, uh, 0 times by t, this cancels out, so therefore we're going to do 0 0.2 times by 2 divided by 9.8 is equal to t square rooted over here. So let's do this. I'm getting the value of t to be equal to 0 0.2 zero two seconds so the time it takes is going to be 0 0.202 seconds over here right now the time taken for it to fall vertically is the same time as it takes it to move obviously horizontally because the time of both of them is going to be the same so the time in both of these are going to be the same so this one will also be 0 0.202 so now we actually have the time in the horizontal plane as well now, calculate the initial velocity. How can I work at the initial velocity, which is obviously 
in the horizontal. So we're trying to find out this, the initial velocity in the horizontal plane. Well, we could do this as well. We can use the SUVAT one again. Yes, we can do SUVAT again. We can use this formula because I've got S, I want, I've got U, well, I want to find U, I've got A, and I've got T. So the initial velocity in the horizontal plane, we're going to go for S is equal to UT plus the half AT squared. Okay, now from here, S, guys, S was going to be equal to 3, yes, in the horizontal plane. The initial velocity, we don't know. Uh, the time is 0.2, yes, so the initial velocity U times by the time 0.202 plus the half A is going to be what? A is 0, so obviously times by T squared. And obviously, the 0 here makes it, the whole thing 0. So therefore, 3 is equal to U times by 0.202 over here. So therefore, we're going to go for 3 divided by 0.202. I'm going to get the answer of the initial velocity in the horizontal plane is 14.85 meters per second. So over here, it's going to be 14.85 meters per second over here. Right, so now we've got this. Uh, we've got the, the initial velocity in the horizontal plane. Now, this one over here, Question C, the magnitude and direction of the velocity as it is just about to hit the dartboard. So as the dart falls, yes, the darts fall, it's going to hit over here. It's going to hit like this. It's going to go like this. Um, right, so we're trying to find that, that value of that velocity here. So it's looking like this. So you know it's going to be going like this as it falls down and it hits the, the board over here. So obviously we can break this up. If I want to work out the value of this velocity... Yeah, the velocity, uh, the magnitude and direction of the velocity as it's just about to hit the dartboard. Well, clearly, I need to resolve it. So if I find uh, the velocity over here, if I find this velocity, let's call this Vx, the final velocity x, because it's going to be in the horizontal. And if I know the final velocity in the y, then I can use Pythagoras to work out what the actual magnitude of the velocity will be. Because if I know this one, Vx and Vy, I can then do it over here. So therefore, V, so let's try and, do we know uh, VY? Do we know VY? Do we know that? No, let's try and find out VY. Um, so I'm going to have to find out the velocity in the vertical plane. So the velocity in the vertical plane over here. That's what, obviously what VY is. Uh, let's go down. Let's go for VY over here. So VY, uh, let's, we can do that. V is equal to U plus a t. This is obviously in the vertical plane. This will tell me the velocity, the final velocity in the y direction. So the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be, so initial velocity is zero, final velocity we don't know, the acceleration is, uh, initial velocity was zero, the acceleration was 9.8, the time taken was 0.202, so the final velocity in the vertical plane, we just do this, uh, 9.8 times by 0.202, I'm going to get the answer of the final velocity going to be equal to 1.9796 meters per second. So the final velocity in this plane over here, it's going to be 1.9796, that's my velocity in the final velocity in the vertical plane. What about the velocity now? So we've, we've got Vy, I've got this Vy over here, which is obviously this is going to be the which we just worked out, 1.9, don't forget that velocity is going to 1.976 meters per second is going down. What about the velocity horizontally over here? How would I find that? Well, hopefully you can identify that because there is no acceleration in the horizontal plane, it remains zero, and obviously there's no change in velocity, so it's the same as before, because there's no change, there's no acceleration. So it's 14.85 again, it's 14.85 over here. So therefore, 14.85 goes into there. Now, we can then uh, look at it. Uh, so this one is going to be 14.85. Now, obviously, you want to find out, find out the final velocity. Well, obviously, it's going to be just Pythagoras then. So V is equal to the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. So V is equal to the square root of uh open bracket 14.85 squared plus 1.9796 squared yes so let's do it again so 14.85 squared plus 
open bracket 1.9796 squared square root the whole thing i'm going to get the answer of the final velocity is equal to 14.98 meters per second so yes this final velocity the magnitude of it is going to be 14.98 so this value will be 14.98 meters per second and um Obviously, I need to know the direction. So I need the direction, and then I'm, then I can just use this. I'd work out the direction uh, from the horizontal over here, which will be tan. Yes, because I know opposite and adjacent. So the next calculation I'll be doing is going to be tan theta. So I want that angle over there. So tan of the angle theta is opposite v y divided by adjacent v x. So uh, from here, it's going to be. There we go. Uh, so theta is equal to tan inverse. So tan to the minus 1 of Vy, 1.9796 divided by Vx, 14.85 over here. I'm going to get the angle of theta to be 7.59. So that angle from the horizontal is going to be 7.59 degrees. That's going to be that angle over here from the horizontal, from the horizontal. Okay, so that was a tough question. Let's try another one. Question two. Archer fish spit water droplets at insects from the surface of the water. The archer fish spits a droplet of water with a velocity of 3.5 meters per second at an angle of 70 degrees to the horizontal, aiming for an insect on a branch above the surface of the water. The horizontal distance to the insect is 0.4. Right, so look, it's coming out over here, yes, and it's 3.5 uh, 3 meters per second, and it's 70 degrees to the horizontal over here. Yes, horizontal distance, uh, there we go, is 0.4. First one, question one, show that the initial horizontal component of the velocity of the droplet is about 1 meters per second. So the initial horizontal component, so it's basically this bit over here. You're trying to work out this bit over there. Don't forget, you're trying to resolve this to this bit over here. So um, you're trying to find this. It's called this ux. Yes, the initial velocity in the x-plane or the horizontal. So that's going to be, uh, we know that, uh, we, well, this is going to be cos, yes? Because uh, cos of the angle 70 is equal to uh, adjacent. This bit is adjacent. ux over hypotenuse over here, 3.5. So therefore, ux is equal to 3.5 times by cos of the angle 70. So over here, we're going to have 3.5 times by cos of the angle 70. I'm going to get the answer of the initial velocity in the horizontal plane is 1.19. Yes, which is going to be 1 meters per second here. Next question. Calculate the vertical distance y to the insect if the droplet hits the insect. Right, so this question is quite tricky because you can't really see like um, how we're going to work out the vertical distance towards the insect. But a good starting point, once again, would be to do SUVAT in both the horizontal and vertical plane. So in the, let's do this over here. So S, U, V, A, and T. So on this side, it's going to be horizontal. The other side is going to be the vertical over here. Horizontal and vertical plane over here. So there, there. And there. So um, in the initial velocity in the horizontal plane, we already worked that out. That was 1, yes, from before. So it's going to be 1 meters per second over here. We did that. Um, the distance in the horizontal plane, yes, we can put that down, is 0 0.4 over here. Good. The final velocity in the horizontal plane is going to be what? Well, don't forget, there's no acceleration in the horizontal plane. So A will be 0. There's no acceleration in the horizontal plane here. The final velocity in the horizontal plane will be what? What will the final velocity be in the horizontal plane? Well, there's no acceleration. It will be the same as before. It will remain as 1 because the acceleration is 0 over here. Right, in the vertical plane, what about the vertical plane? So don't forget, um, resolving this, the initial velocity, let's call this one over here, u, uh, and obviously y, yes, because it's going to be, you're trying to work out the initial velocity in the vertical plane. I'll put u, y over here. Right, so the distance, we don't know, it's going to be y. Um, we can work at the initial velocity in the vertical plane because that's going to be um, 3.5 sine of the angle 70. So this is going to be 3.5 sine of the angle 70 over here. Very good. The acceleration now, 
Because you are going against gravity, you know gravity is 9.8. If you're increasing, you're going against gravity. The acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, right. So look, we're trying to work out the vertical distance. So we don't know how to work this out uh, because we've got two unknowns right now. But we need one more to be able to work this one out. Right, the time. The time. What about the time? So look, if I get the time from the horizontal, I know it will be the same as the time in the vertical. And then I can solve this problem over here. So let's try and work at the time from the horizontal. And then we can plug this one into, uh, into the vertical. And then I can find out the, the vertical distance in the y plane. Right, so let's do this uh, very slowly. So first of all, let's work at the time using the data from the horizontal. So over here, let's go for, um, uh, what can we do? We can go for SUVAT once again, yes. Uh, so S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. Yes, this is for the horizontal. So 0 0.4 is equal to U1 times by the time, the time we don't know, T, yes, uh, plus a half AT squared. This all becomes what? This all becomes zero because A is zero. So therefore, that's all it is. So 0 0.4 over here. So there we go over here. So therefore t is equal to 0 0.4 divided by 1. The time taken is 0 0.4. So the time taken is 0 0.4 seconds. So now we know the time of the horizontal plane. That's the same time the vertical plane, 0 0.4 seconds over here. There we go. Now we've got this. Now I can solve for the vertical plane. I can find out what the displacement will be. So I've got u in the vertical plane. I've got a in the vertical plane. And now I have t in the vertical plane. We can do this quite easily. We can use the same formula again. So uh, s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. s is equal to ut plus the half at squared. So s is equal to the value of u, 3.5 sine of the angle 70. Yes, close bracket times by the time of 0 0.4 plus the half times by minus 9.8. Yes, the half times by minus 9.8 times by 0 0.4 close bracket squared. Right, so what does that all give us? So I'm getting 1.3 for all of this minus 0 0.784 for this bit over here. So 1.3 minus the answer. The displacement is going to be equal to 0.52. So yes, this one over here, we've now worked this out for five marks. This one's going to be uh, 0.52 over here. Uh, right, some of you might obtain a different answer because you might have actually used the, the value, not, not this one which they rounded it. If you used 1.2 meters per second from uh, the start of the using this bit over here, um, 3.5 cos 70, you'd get 1.2. If you use that, your value will be slightly different. It will be 0.55. But the thinking process remains the same. Okay, next one. Sketch the path of the water droplet on the diagram above. Sketch the path of the water droplet. Obviously, it's going to move in the parabola. So there we go. It will go upwards over here and go like this. Yes, and obviously curve around. All right, so I know I said I'd do three questions, guys, but I'm only doing two questions because I realize this will just become a really long video. Make sure you understand the thinking processes and simple stuff. Make sure you look at the horizontal and the vertical, see that. Sometimes you might see stuff from the vertical plane into the horizontal, and sometimes you might use stuff from the horizontal plane into the vertical when solving your uh, calculations, guys. Yes, it is tricky, but the more questions you look at, the better you will get in projectile motion. And that's it, guys. I shall see you for another session in Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going, and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.